Hi, I'm Pete McCall, author of the ACE certified article on growth hormone and insulin-like growth factor. This presentation will do a review of what these hormones are and how different types of exercise programs can stimulate production of these hormones, which are extremely important for burning fat and increasing lean muscle mass. First, we need to understand the general endocrine response to exercise. Hormones are chemicals produced by glands in the body. Hormones will interact only with specific receptor sites on cells. Exercise causes acute or short-term changes in hormone levels, both during the workout and immediately after the exercise session. Over the long term or over the chronic length of an exercise program, there'll be an elevation in both resting levels of hormones and the amount of receptor sites on cells. Over the course of an exercise program, the body will become more efficient at producing hormones after a workout. And finally, the body will increase level receptor sites, meaning hormones will have more receptor sites to interact with, so they play a bigger role in helping promote muscle growth or other physiological activities. Growth hormone is a peptide hormone. That means it works with specific receptor sites on cell membranes. Growth hormone is produced by the anterior pituitary gland, and can be produced during the REM cycles of sleep, so it's very important that clients get a great night's sleep the evening after a hard workout. GH can help increase protein synthesis and the uptake of amino acids. That means it helps promote the muscle repair process after a challenging high-intensity workout. GH can also increase lipolysis, which is conversion of free fatty acids to ATP with oxygen. It also helps stimulate the release of insulin-like growth factor, and it can enhance immune system function. Now note that in response to strength training, growth hormone plays a much more important role in females than testosterone. Insulin-like growth factor, or IGF, has been identified as an important anabolic hormone by researcher Dr. Brad Schoenfeld. On your screen, you can see a few bullet points from a meta-analysis he did on the research reviewing GH and IGF and their response to resistance training. IGF is a peptide hormone. That means it interacts with specific receptor sites on cell membrane. In response to resistance training, IGF is produced in both the liver and muscle cells. It works with growth hormone for mechanical restructuring. That means repair of damaged muscle tissue. It can also stimulate the production of satellite cells, which are the individual cells used to repair damaged tissues. Both resistance training and HIT are two specific types of exercise that cause mechanical stress on tissues. It's these types of exercise and working to the point of fatigue that can elevate levels of GH and IGF-1, which are then used to repair muscles damaged during exercise. Knowing how to design exercise programs following the ACE Integrated Fitness Training Model, or ACE IFT model, can give you the information to design exercise programs to help elevate levels of both GH and IGF-1 in your clients' bodies. Muscular training is organized into three specific phases, functional, movement, and load speed. It's the heavy resistance training and the explosive training in the load speed phase of training that creates a mechanical overload, especially strength training to the point of fatigue, or explosive power training are both important stimuli for increasing the GH IGF-1 response. Knowing how to apply a three-zone model of cardiorespiratory program design is all you need to know for designing cardiorespiratory workouts that can increase IGF-1 and GH in your clients' bodies. It's a higher intensity exercise in both zone two and zone three that can be that stimulus for increasing the levels of anabolic hormones, specifically GH and IGF-1. It's a higher intensity exercise that relies on anaerobic metabolism that has been correlated with elevated levels of these important anabolic hormones. Whether you're doing cardiorespiratory program design or muscular development program design, the primary thing that you wanna to do to help increase levels of anabolic hormones is have your clients work to a point of fatigue. Yes, that might be uncomfortable, but discomfort is what we need or discomfort is what clients need in order to be able to make the changes they want in their body. Remember, if it doesn't challenge them, it won't change them. 
So encouraging your clients to exercise to a point of fatigue, either through strength training or cardiorespiratory training, is an important factor in helping promote levels of muscle building hormones in their body. Thanks for tuning in and make sure you read the entire article on growth hormone innocent like growth factor in the ACE certified magazine.